good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Well guys, I uh, got up this morning and uh, packed myself up for an early day scout today. Um, fixing myself some hot bacon side meat here real quick, pork side meat that's been salted and cured. We're going to talk about salt curing as well in a video later on today. But I kind of want to shoot a little day in the life video today, like a day in the life of the yurt. You know, Basically, we've been doing that every day. But I've been throwing a lot of tidbits in as well. And today, I just kind of want you to follow me around, see what I do all day long. Um, first thing I'm going to do this morning is, you know, I've already went out and hauled some firewood over here, chopped a bit of wood. I got it over here in a pile, stoked the stove up real good for cooking. And uh, I'm going to make myself some breakfast, get something hot in me, and then we're going to start our day. So stay with me, guys. Okay, I'm going to pop this other egg in the skillet here. Hot grease. Yep. Yeah. Basically, I'd like to see that egg just kind of floating in that grease. Make it cook a whole lot better. And I can just flip hot grease up on top of it, get the top side cooked, make myself a nice over easy egg when I'm done. The trick I learned from watching my buddy Ryan Eves who's a instructor here at the Pathfinder School but he's also a culinary especially it's culinary stuff and flipping hot grease up on that egg like that just cooks the top side of it makes a real nice over easy egg that egg here is about done too so we'll slide her over here in the skillet right so I'm up here in this big bramble thicket right now just kind of day scouting around and I'm really looking for potential trapping lanes now that we got some snowfall to do some snaring up here you can see these real heavy brambles up in here that's usually a really good area for rabbits any place you got these raspberry thickets it's usually a great place for rabbits but it's a good place for other resources too and other game deer bed down and stuff like this too so we're just kind of scouting this ridge line to see what we can find see if we can find anything it looks like it might have been a rabbit run while we're up here well, there's one heck of a rub right there on a sapling pine some deer just worked that thing over within the last couple months before and during the rut probably. This ridge line is a pretty good spot for deer as well for sure. Okay guys this is a pretty good find for a scout and I've had people ask me about this and this is a really good opportunity to show it. This is a pine tree. You can tell by looking at the bark and the yellowish color of that wood that it's a pine. So if you walk down to the bottom of this pine pretty good size walk down to the base of this pine that's where we're gonna find pitch wood or fat wood if there's any of it out here and you can see that right there is fat wood see all that resin in there that's a piece of fat wood so we should be taking some of this with us for sure 
So hang on, I'm going to set this camera up. I'm going to bust some of this fat wood out of here and show you what it looks like. And I'll put a lighter to it and show you how it lights as well. I call it lighter wood, fat wood, pitch wood. Got a lot of different names. Now the cool thing about this resource is, you know, it's here. We don't have to take it all now. I know where it's at. I got a mental note of exactly where it's at on this ridge line. I can look around here for, you know, telltale signs and markers. It'll tell me and lead me right back to where this is at. I know it's along a ridge line right here. I see several large oaks around it. I see several large pines around it. I see a big stand of pines right here beside me. There's a pretty good sized stand of pines. That's a telltale sign because there's not a lot of standing pine out here as far as stands. There's single trees, but there's very few stands where there's eight or ten pines. There's one right here beside me. And that tells me where this fat wood's going to be or where this pitch wood's at, so I can come back and get it the next time around. I don't have to take it all now. So let's get this uh, east wing axe out of our belt here. Bust a couple chunks of this off and split it down, and we'll see, you know, what we got. Oh man, that stuff, it's just, you smell it, and you can just smell the turpentine in that. That is the king right there. So we're not going to take a ton of this with us. But we're going to take some of it with us. Okay, we got a few pieces off of there. Now let's kind of split a little bit of this down and look at it and see just how good and pitchy it really is. All right, so let's get a piece of this and split it off. And uh, I'll just stick it up on the side. Of this thing I've been cutting it off of here. And split it down a little bit. Split a couple matchsticks out of it. Basically, is what I'm going to do. You can see I split that several times right there, just to make small, like fat lighter wood matches. So I'll pull one out of that, the middle of that, and that's going to be full of resin. And then I'm going to take my knife and make a little bit of a feather stick out of it. And boy, I, tell you, I can just feel the thickness and the heaviness of that resin in there. I don't know how to explain that to you, but you can really feel it, see it, and smell it when you've got the right stuff. I mean, this stuff smells just like pine saw. So all I'm doing now is just giving myself a little surface area to take flame. And you can ignite this with the ferro rod. I showed how to do that in one of my other videos in the yurt there. But you can very easily do this with a lighter. But it gives you that extended burn time that you need sometimes as a coal extender. So let's grab our lighter out real quick. That's always my first choice. And we'll try to keep this out of the wind as much as we can. I got wind blowing across this ridge. We'll try to keep this thing lit as best we can. In fact, I think I'm going to move this camera over here in front of me to block the wind there we go only advantage to cold lighters is they're when they get cold they don't light very well there we go you can see that thing how well that thing's burning as long as we can keep it out of the wind And that's the resin in that wood burning like that. You got four or five of these little sticks like this and you can give yourself one heck of a shot at fire. Even if you got some marginal materials because this stuff will burn for a long time and it burns really hot. You can see how that thing's just flaming up so heavy and that's just a little bitty stick. Try to keep it out of this wind for you. So you can kind of watch it burn. You can see how it's creeping up onto this resiny area of the wood now. Keep it out of the wind here. So all of this stuff that we just smacked off of this tree with our axe is all fat wood and you can see 
you look inside that you can see that you know heavy layer of resin in there and you can smell that there's no mistake in that resin smell it smells just like pine saw like I said but that's how you find fatwood go up find yourself a dead pine somewhere go to the roots of that pine and you're gonna find resin I don't care what time of year it is you're gonna find it there as you can see how well that thing's still burning in my hand just like a match except it's a long-term match once you get it lit So we'll take this fat wood back, process some of it up in smaller chunks to put in our backpack, and we'll have something great for helping us start fire when we got marginal tinder material. Because these things are the bomb. the reason that you always want your pack to have at least a little room in it somewhere you know there's not a lot of room left in this pack right now but you want a little bit of room somewhere because if you find a resource like this you sure want to be able to pack it out of there you know I've got this uh, I've got this old bow sleeve here that I picked up at a, at a primitive bow shoot a long time ago and I've got five or six kind of like this um, this is probably my least favorite one that's on one of my bows so um, I've cut this thing off to the right length for my shotgun because I've been looking for a shotgun sleeve that looks traditional this is kind of a brown canvas material you know and it's pretty heavy duty material but that's the beauty of these repair needles is you know it doesn't really matter what the material is they're gonna go through it so what I'm gonna do basically is I'm just gonna sew up the end of this thing while I'm sitting in here um, and make myself a protective sleeve for my gun while I'm in camp or walking through the woods or whatever the case may be. Um, I've still got some of this. I, did, I saved this stuff that we split apart the last time we were sewing something up in here. Now I'm down to two strands. And two strands is really a whole lot easier to separate than the three. <laughs> Remember I showed you how to separate three strands of this stuff. Two strands is a whole lot easier. Okay, so now you see it's all kinked up just like the last time, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this Jeremy's Wonder Wax here stuff that I have got. I'm going to wax my thread a little bit with that. That just gives it a little bit of a waterproof type seal, but it also will help me straighten this thread out a little bit too, because I'm going to have to pull it through this wax cure, this cube, to make that happen. There we go. Now I can put that rub that wax into it real good put that through my needle and I'll be ready to go piece of cake you know projects like this are, are what you're gonna spend your days doing I mean everything that you do is just another project that you're trying to get done and everything just improves your lot as it were you know just kinda makes things better for you makes things easier for you you know this gun sleeve is gonna just help to protect my gun while I'm walking through the woods with it or while I'm sitting in camp with it or whatever the case may be but you know it's something that's also keeping me occupied and making things better for me like I said every day I'm just gonna fold this thing over to get a loop here and I'm not gonna get real fancy with this you know I'm, like I said I've said this a lot of times you know I'm really after uh, function not fashion so I'm just gonna do basically a continuous loop stitch here and this stuff's real heavy duty. You can see I'm having to push that needle through every time on this table. So this is some real heavy duty cotton duck canvas type material. Which is good because that means it's going to be good for protecting my gun. And like I said, I'm just doing a running stitch here. Just a continuous loop stitch. I'm not half hitching every time like I did the last time. 
I'm just doing a, basically a running loop stitch. That'll hold this just fine with the fabric doubled over like that, no problem. I might just get these tails burned and out of my way real quick just to not have to deal with them being in my way every time I come over with a loop. So the other good thing about this bank line is, you know, it melts really good since it's made out of like a nylon. A tarred nylon, it melts real well too. And I'm trying to get about 10 stitches per inch here, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, and they're double stitches. So I guess maybe six double stitches per inch, um, however you want to equate that, whether that's six or 12. But they're pretty close together. Like I said, I'm after function, not fashion, so I don't care if it's perfect or not, as long as it holds together. Now, sewing is kind of an underrated thing, I think, in the self-reliance world. You know, it's important to understand how to sew different types of stitches and things because you're going to have to repair gear. You know, in a longer term situation, you're going to have gear that gets tore up, you're going to have gear that gets damaged, and you need to effectively repair that stuff, you know cold weather you know <laughs> the R in colder in the military acronym stands for repair as necessary you know it's evaluate and then repair as necessary so there's gonna be times you're gonna have to repair gear and you really need to know a couple basic sewing type stitches to be able to do that okay so when we're done basically we've got a sleeve that our single shot H&R 12 gauge fits in just perfect and uh, good to go you know now I can protect that thing from the weather while I'm walking down the trail or whatever if I need to if it starts to get foul outside you know I can cover this thing up it's good to go it's a nice piece of equipment and I can store other things in it if I need to you know I can use it for you know dry pieces of firewood and things like that if I want to shovel them in there to carry them back to camp or whatever the case may be in inclement weather I think I can go ahead and oil skin this thing and make it even better I may do that in the future but for right now you know I think it's good to go